Okay, this morning when my daughter left her cold water bottle on the counter, forgot it when she went off to soccer practice, I watched it there for a while and there was, um, it's led to me to do this time-lapse video on condensation that I'm going to do in just a minute. Let's set this up. I'm going to take, uh, this is just a regular water bottle, not insulated, so it's a metal water bottle. I'm going to put some ice in, in there. So, take some cubes. Some ice cubes in there, and then I'm going to take some cold water out of the refrigerator. Okay, fill that up, and now what I'm going to do is I can already I can already feel the outside of the bottle here. It's pretty cold already, so. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put this over there, I'm gonna do time lapse of this over the next, I don't know, I'm not, not sure how long, and we're gonna watch uh, the condensation that's gonna form on the outside of this bottle. I'm not sure how it's gonna look in time lapse, Ho hopefully it'll look cool, but uh, we're gonna see. Oh, hello. You must have just watched the condensation time-lapse video. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I bet you're wondering yourself, how did that happen? Well, first let's go back. Here's a water bottle here. And in the video you saw water droplets forming on the outside of it. People often refer to that as sweating. A common word for it is that the water bottle is sweating. But what's really happening, the real term for it is condensation. Water vapor in the air is condensing on the outside of the water bottle and has something to do with temperature, the cold water inside. Let's explain a little bit about air temperature and how much water vapor it can hold. So, let's say I have regular air, room temperature air, and let's say how much it's, it's represented by this glass. How much water vapor air that this temperature can hold is the amount that's, that's in the glass. Okay? And then this would be air that is 25 degrees cooler, let's say. It can hold much less. It's a smaller glass. Okay? So, let's say I'll take some water and I'll pour it in this glass. Just like this. Okay? So, this glass here is maybe two-thirds full. Okay? So, in that case, we would say, if this was water vapor, not liquid water, we would say the relative humidity of this air is 67%. It's 67% full of water vapor. Now, if you took this same air and you cooled it down to whatever I said that was, let's say 30 degrees cooler, its, it's ability to hold water vapor is less. It can hold less. So it's as if it's the smaller glass. Now, let's see. We go from 67% relative humidity, and then I pour it into here. Oh, and it overflows a little bit. It's 100% full. Okay. In this case, we would say it cooled down to the, to the relative humidity is 100%. It cannot hold any more, more water vapor. When that happens in the air, the water vapor will condense from being, a wa um, from being water vapor to a liquid, and it's called condensation. You see that as liquid droplets, and that's what we saw on the outside of this bottle. Because what happened, we had very cold water inside, ice with cold water, and the room temperature air, that was maybe 50, 60 percent relative humidity, would touch the outside of it. And the air right up against it would cool down. And it would cool down until it reached its dew point temperature. And so it couldn't hold any more water vapor. And the water vapor in the air condensed on the outside of the bottle. 
and that's why you see condensation. You often see condensation when the, something in here is very cold, or if you have a lot of high humidity in the air, you're much more likely to have condensation. If you have a drink or something, you're going to want to use a coaster, and that's much more common where we live in upstate New York in the summertime when you have much um, higher relative humidity. So, thank you for watching the condensation time lapse video. I hope you learned something about condensation, sweating, you, as they say, on everyday objects, and uh, we'll see you next time.